Hello, it's Marshall Chess. You've been taking a time machine ride. We're up to major changes in my life, 1968. But before we get to those, I want to play you some of the cuts that have stuck in my consciousness more than the others. I don't know why. Is it the melody? Is it the lyric? Is it the artist? But these are some songs that are constantly running through my head. Oh, <laughs> 
This is the Chess Records. It's 1968. I want to tell you a little bit about the changes that are about to take place at Chess Records. I was lucky. I was the owner's son. I had the keys to the front door and the keys to the studio. I love producing records. I wanted to follow in my father and my uncle's footsteps. And I started working on projects. I convinced my family that I should have my own label, Cadet Concept to exploit these projects with all the chess artists and musicians that I've grown to know over all the years. Here's a cut from Electric Mud, one of the controversial cuts I made having that key to the studio.
Marshall Chess. That's a cut from Electric Mud, probably the most controversial album I made. Here's the story behind it. I knew all the musicians in Chicago when I put together a band with the help of Gene Barge, one of the chess producers. We picked the most avant-garde, young, hot musicians in Chicago and made this electric mud band. I convinced Muddy to be the vocalist on it. It was never meant to be a new career in sound for Muddy Waters. In my head, it was like getting Marlon Brando to be in my movie. He was the voice. The band was the sound. Remember, America was changing. Psychedelic era had begun. And my label was aimed at that market. We went in the studio and cut this album. It shot up the charts through the FM radio. The white audience loved it. But then the blues fundamentalists began to attack it. And little by little, the airplay stopped. But it still sells today. It's still a cult album and probably one of Muddy Waters' biggest sellers. Anyway, even though I was upset by all the negative publicity... It didn't deter me. You know, my dad always told me that you always risk ridicule when you try something new. And with that in my makeup, I went forward. Plus, blues sales on Muddy and Holland Wolf and Little Walter were dropping by the week. That market was drying up and the white market was just growing. We were desperate to expose our great artists to this new market. So I made another album with Howling Wolf with that same electric mud band. Here's a cut from that one. Dance, dance, dance. 
We've been listening to the electric, psychedelic sounds of Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, records I produced in 1968 and 69. We'll come back to more of that music a little later on in the show. I'm Marshall Chess here on the Chess Records Hour. You know, mixed in with all these electric sounds, I want to play on the show today these great chess records that I haven't been able to get out of my mind in all these years. Like I said, I don't know why, but they run through my head. Here's two more of them.
You're listening to the Chess Records Hour. I'm Marshall Chess. I'm talking about my last years of chess, 1968, 1969. Little did I know what was coming up in my life. But in the meantime, I had my own label, Cadet Concept, that key to the studio. And I met this amazing, brilliant artist, a man named Charles Stepney, who was doing copyright work for us at Chess Records. One day I noticed he had this six-inch thick manuscript. I said, hey, Charles, what is that? He said, it's a symphony I wrote to graduate from music school. I said, you wrote a symphony? I said, did you ever hear it played? He said, no, I hear it in my head when I play piano. Well, becoming friends with Charles was a great thing for me. It was the door opener to this project I wanted to do for a long time, Rotary Connection, an interracial group mixing strings, rock, some of the chess great sidemen to come up with a whole new concept aimed at that psychedelic age. It was my keynote project in 1968, Rotary Connection. Turn me on. I 
Rotary Connection. You know, when I hear it now, it's amazing how much the sounds coming out of chess had changed over 20 years. From two microphone recording in mono to Rotary Connection using symphony orchestra players, rhythm section, harp, sitars. Amazing changes at Chess Records. I'm Marshall Chess here at the Chess Records Hour. I got a great memory that I want to tell you. Riding along the Outer Drive in Chicago, it's a highway along the lake, right where Obama gave his acceptance speech. And my dad's punching the buttons on the radio. Boom, all of a sudden I hear Chuck Berry, Maybelline, and my dad just starts pounding the steering wheel. He looks over at me. He said, Marsha, we finally made it. Well, what was playing? W-I-N-D. A white radio station in the big white Wrigley building in Chicago playing a chess record, Chuck Berry, 1955. Big changes for my family, for chess, and for the whole world. Here's that record I heard riding along with my dad. It's MC here, all things chess records, and a lot more on this podcast coming up. I walk 47 miles of barbed wire. I use a cobra snake for a necktie. I got a brand new house on the roadside, made from rattlesnake hide. I got a brand new chimney made on top, made out of a human skull. Now come on, take a little walk with me, Arlene, and tell me who do you love? 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 Tombstone hand in a graveyard mine, just 22 and I don't mind dying. Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you love? I rode around the town, use a rattlesnake whip. Take it easy, Arlie, don't give me no lip. Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Thank you. 
wagon flew. Hit a bump and somebody screamed. You should have heard just what I seen. Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Who do you love? Arlene took me by my hand. She said, Who we both, you know, I understand. Who do you love, honey? I love Bo Diddley, one of those great chess records that I can't get out of my head. It's Marshall Chess here on the Chess Records Hour. Here's another little story, a movie called Cadillac Records, a story about chess records, about Chicago, and Beyonce Knowles, the great R&B and soul singer, she plays Etta James, and one of the top scenes in the movie is Etta singing her classic, At Last. The little twist is, typical Hollywood... It was my uncle, Phil Chess, who got out of that song, got the arranger, and was inspirational in making that great record. Thing is, he's not even in the movie. Just like Hollywood, they cut him out saying it didn't work. I want to play this track and dedicate it to my uncle, Phil, the guy that made that record and many more great chess records, and unfortunately, he never gets the credit. Eddie James, at last. It's Marshall Chess here in the Chess Records Hour. I want to take you back to 1968 and 69. That's when I had my own label, Cadet Concept, producing records right and left. Had some good success with Electric Mud and the Electric Wolf album and the Rotary Connection album and continued grinding out albums. Decided to do another follow-up with Muddy, called it After the Rain. This record's never been put out in CD in America, but I found a copy of the vinyl and made a special copy for you serious listeners. Check it out now. Yeah. 
Muddy Waters, Bottom of the Sea from After the Rain. Only place you're going to hear that track is here on my show. You know, these albums were controversial, but I kept remembering what my father taught me. If you want to try something new, you have to get ready for criticism. Five years later, people like it. I know these albums upset a lot of the purists. And the truth is, as much as I love those psychedelic albums, I love the roots. I love the great chess classics. Here's two of my favorites. The gypsy woman told my mother Before I was born You got a boy child coming He gonna be a son of a gun He 
we're going to make pretty women jump and shout. Then the world want to know what it's all about, but you know I'm here. I got a black cat bone. I got a mojo too. I got a John the Conqueror. I got to mess with you. I'm gonna make you girls leave me by my hand. Then the world'll know I'm a hoochie coochie man. But you know I'm here. On the seven hour, on the seven day, on the seven month, the seven doctors say he was born for good luck, and that you see, I got seven hundred dollars. Don't you mess with me, but you know.
Jane Superstitious Howlin' Wolf. Well, the last project I was involved with at Chess Records was sending the wolf to London. Listen to his band in London. Eric Clapton on guitar, Bill Wyman from the Stones on bass, Charlie Watts from the Stones on drums, Hubert Sumlin, Wolf's guitar player, with him. Steve Winwood on keyboards, along with Ian Stewart, the Stones keyboard player, a major backup man with Wolf sitting in a chair in a London studio. I was at those sessions, and it's something I'll always remember. Wolf's London Sessions. Turns out that was the last album I was involved in on Chess. Soon after that, big changes happened. My father, my uncle, decided to sell Chess Records. It was sold. And then shortly after, my father died at 52 years old, and my uncle was let go. And these new corporate owners, they tried to cut me out, but I fought. I fought, and I ended up being president of Chess. Inside of a year, I hated the job under this corporate umbrella, so I quit. While sitting home, depressed with the blues, the phone rang, and someone told me that the Rolling Stones, whom I'd previously met when they recorded at the Chess Studios, were looking for a new start to their career. I called Mick Jagger, and soon after, the next chapter of my life began. 
I found the Rolling Stones records with the tongue and lips with the Rolling Stones and ran it for seven years and was the executive producer of seven great Rolling Stones album. The blues boy became a rock and roller. Here's one of my favorite Stones cuts from that era. Tumbling Dice, the Rolling Stones. Who would have thought that 30 years after being born, I'd be deeply involved with the greatest rock and roll band in the whole world, who got their name from the Muddy Waters single, Rolling Stone, on Chess Records. It's Marshall Chess here on the Chess Records Hour, saying so long. I'll be back again real soon. Oh, oh, oh.